This core component training video is exploring a procurement overview and global feature settings for procurement. The procurement module is found under projects with a project selected. Near the bottom, click on the procurement feature. Procurement is more than tracking actual cost. The procurement module also tracks committed costs. The features include anticipated costs, RFP packages, POs, bills, subcontracts, subcontract change orders, and sub-invoices. To access procurement module, a project must be set up and an approved contract under that project must already be established. We also recommend that you create the project directory which is a list of companies that you're going to be collaborating with on that project. There's an important principle to be remembered when dealing with the procurement module. The information flowing from procurement takes two forms. First, actual or direct cost is tracked through bills and sub invoices. These are compared to cost budgets. But there's also a principle referred to as committed cost. As mentioned, actual or direct cost comes from two features in CoreCon's procurement module, bills and sub-invoices. In addition, actual or direct cost is compared to budgets. Budgets come from the original budgeted values in the prime contract, as well as the approved cost budgets of any change orders. However, the procurement module contributes several types of data to the committed cost. Committed cost is a feature used to project potential outcomes. The idea is to be able to foresee the actual cost of a project long before it's finished. The procurement module contributes five bits of information to committed costs, those being approved purchase orders, bills that are not associated with POs, approved subcontracts, approved subcontract change orders, and anticipated costs. We encourage you to consider a few of CoreCon's global settings related to the procurement module. To find these, go to the global settings option. The first three are found under company settings. First of all, take a look at the numbering options. Under the procurement module, you can format how the purchase order numbers default when creating a new transaction. The same is true for subcontracts and subcontract change orders. Next are payment terms. CoreCom provides some sample payment terms, but others can be added that automatically calculate, and you'll find that list in CoreCon's help articles. Next, we'll go to taxation. Sales tax codes and sales tax groups can be set up. Next, let's go to feature settings and down to procurement. The first featured option relates to anticipated costs. You have the option to itemize anticipated costs in detail or summarize anticipated costs by job cost code. Next is the option to not allow subcontracts or subcontract change order items to be modified after sub invoices have been created. This option plays a crucial role in internal controls and control measures that will avoid discrepancies with data, especially when it comes to fixed lump sum subcontracts. Basically, if original contract items and subcontract change orders are imported into a sub invoice, the items should not be modified at a later date, especially if the transaction has already been approved and paid for. However, CoreCon does offer the opportunity to override such modifications to a subcontract or subcontract change order. We recommend you keep this setting checked. However, an administrator can override that option. The next option is the check duplicate invoice numbers on bills and sub invoices. When entering bills or sub invoices, the system can do a lookup to check if the invoice number was already used in the system for that particular project and vendor. 
If a record already exists, the warning message will be provided, but the user can choose to ignore it. We recommend that this option also remain checked. There are three lists that Quercon allows you to customize for your company. The first are build types. Build types are a way of grouping and classifying lists of build transactions for reporting purposes. These also play a role in how information is exported to your accounting software. To edit the list, click the edit option. To add new items to the list, click add. The next list are the purchase order types. Again, a way of grouping and classifying lists of PO transactions. These also can be edited or added to. The third list is the subcontract change order initiated by. When creating a new subcontract change order, you can identify the source or cause of the subcontract change order. Again, these can be edited or you can click add and add new lines to that classification list. Back to the home menu and back to procurement module. To learn more about the information discussed in this training video, we encourage you to go to the help articles, down to leads and projects, down to procurement, and review the articles under the procurement settings.